All in favor? Lucy may want to read that first. Lucy may want to read it first. Before we Go ahead, Miss Lucy. To our consent agenda, we're substituting item 5A, which is a resolution accepting the bid of DNA Underground and authorizing execution of repair replace contract for the city of Biloxi. We're also adding item 5D, resolution authorizing submittal of an application and committing match for Gulf Coast Restoration Fund for the Pops Ferry Extension Phase 1. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous vote. Do I have a motion to accept the agenda as so amended? Moved. Motion by Mr. Tisdale. Second, second by Mr. Gines. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous vote. This brings us to the presentation agenda. Mayor's report. Uh, yes, Madam President, I think we have a need to discuss some in the executive session uh, some possible litigation. For FEMA, yeah. I think Gerald's here. Right now, or yeah, I think it would be better to do it right now. Okay. All right. Might as well. And that's, that'll be all of my mayor's report. One second. We're going to an executive session. Okay. I need. A motion and a second to go in a closed session for the purpose of examining the necessity to go in executive session. Okay. Motion by Mr. Gimes. Second. Second by Mr. Tisdale. All in favor? Unanimous vote. Now I need a motion and second that the council conclude the closed session and reconvene as an open meeting. Motion second. by Mr. Gimes. Second by Mr. Tisdale. All in favor? Unanimous vote. And now I need a motion and second that we go into an executive session. Motion by Mr. Guy. Second. Second by Mr. Tisdale. All in favor? Okay. Going into an executive session. And in a second that the council conclude the executive session and reconvene as an open meeting. Motion by Mr. Lawrence. Second by Mr. Gines. All in favor? Unanimous vote. And let the record state that no action was taken. Mayor's that, report. That concludes my report. Okay. No departmental reports, correct? Nope. Okay, we'll move on to council reports, Mr. Lawrence. We have oh, we one do. department. Yeah. Okay, which one? Go ahead. Oscar Renda to give an update on the infrastructure progress. I'm Jennifer Matranga, the project manager for Oscar Renda Contracting. Um, we are working on Walker and Elder Streets. We have a, a big push going over there to get the base course of asphalt down uh, before school starts. We are putting down. They're okay. not doing this. Okay. So. Yeah, everybody been glad when this over. This was August of 14. It's five years. I know. The disaster for like putting the road base down on Elder from Maine, in between Maine and Lemuse. And we got about eight structures that we're building simultaneously right now on Elder to get it ready for the final, uh, the, the rest of the sub base to go down before the asphalt and curbing. Once the work is done on Elder and Walker, the base course of asphalt, then we'll move on to Parker and Main Street and Lemuse north of Elder to install the road basin, um, base course of asphalt on those streets. We are All the all the storm drain pipe is in on those streets on Elder. Um, 
we're in, uh, today we're installing base course of asphalt on Fayard, on Strawberry, and on the section of Elder from Kyvet to Raynor. Um, that's a lot of as base course of asphalt going down. Um, we have installed the final course of asphalt on Dacey, Rosada, Midway, Keller from Esters to Division, Old Bayview by the Harbor, Lee Street north of Suarez, Crescent Hill, Dr. Gilbert Mason, Heidenheim, and Splendor. The drainage is complete on Forest south of Division. We're working on Forest north of Division, getting the rest of the sewer and the drainage in that area. And we are uh, finishing up the storm drain on Benaki. By the end of the week, we'll have the main storm drain complete. Then just starting on the beginning of next week, having the tie-ins and the laterals down by Esposito, Thelma, and tying in the storm drain structures. On Monday, uh, well, on Friday, we'll have a storm drain structure crew moving in there uh, so that we can finish up that work on Benaki. We're working on cruces on the uh, sidewalks and um, we'll continue on uh, the walker installing sidewalks and driveways on Walker when they get finished with that, moving their way from Walker down to Elder, um, all that area by the school. So we've talked with the principal of Gornflow and let her know as well that by August the 5th, we'll have all that base course done and completed so it won't interfere with school. And I think that's about all I have. Jennifer, Jennifer, let me ask, uh, you know, after the final is done, what's left? In the, is some cleanup and striping and sort of thing like take on Division Street? What, what, what needs to be done? On Division? Yeah, uh, maybe some backfilling of curbs and if there's any um, type of sidewalk that got left out or we're going back now and where perhaps we were just installing a concrete apron, now maybe they've the inspectors have said, hey, look, we think it's best to go back an additional uh, amount past the apron. We'll be going back and doing those things, striping, installing street signs. Removing some of the excess asphalt and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Okay. Clean up, fencing. Uh, explain to me again what you're doing on Benaki. Where is this uh, part going to be finished? Is that division? In Benaki? No. Or is that by the railroad track? In railroad tracks. And what you have to do there? Finish installing storm drains. Now, the sewer is done, you're putting in a storm drain? We're just doing so storm drains. We'll, we'll be finished laying the pipe. On Friday, we'll have structure crews. We have six structures to build on that road. Very deep structures. So we'll be doing the structures on that road and also laying, we call them laterals. The main trunk line going up Benaki, well, then there's a lateral that goes up down Thelma, across Graham, Thelma, Graham, Graham, Graham. Mm -hmm, to Ty Graham, and that's right. And then there's another one going from box to box, north, uh, south on Benaki towards the tracks. And then lastly, there's two box, there's, it ties in at Esposito, probably have like 130 foot to run at Esposito. Do you all have anything to do with the other side of the railroad track? Not, not no, that I'm talking about between not. Hot Avenue and the railroad track. Between not, where? Not the other ones. Not Benaki going to the beach. The railroad track is between Howard Avenue and Howard and Benaki. Who's handling that part there? I think Lane. <coughs> oh, that, um. That, yes, that. that little piece, not very big. That's right. No, it's. it's Lane Construction, I think, did that for Hemphill Construction. Okay. So I was just wondering, because I've seen always that part and all the way down Benaki was the biggest holdup for us getting anything done, completing everything as far as that. So just just checking out. Thank you. 
Yeah, I have a few questions. Um, Estes Boulevard between uh, Lee Street and Keller Street. Um, I've been inquiring about the driveways, putting the driveways back, and putting the side, sidewalks back. Um, is there any, you have any idea of when that'll be done? I think there's just a couple of driveways we have to tie in, but I want to say last I heard, we, I, don't, I think we weren't installing the sidewalks that as per planned. If we need to install them, it's not a big deal, but um, we'll, I mean, we'll be back over there. I can't give you an exact time. Yeah, because when they call me 10 or 12 times and it kind of becomes a big it's, deal. It's a small little piece and it yeah. actually the driveway is in very, very good shape. It's yeah. causing no transition from the road to their driveway. But yeah, I can understand. Yeah, and I don't, you know, and I, I get it. It's a small piece, but to the residents, it's, it's huge. And, and I've inquired a couple of times and never got any feedback uh, from it. So, you know, if, if you can make that happen and sure. I tried to mention it while the uh, workers were out there so they can just knock it out. Okay. But they decided. But uh, for some reason, I got kind of blew off on it. You know, okay. On that, and that just, you know, it, it's a little irritating when you're, uh, residents keep asking you over and over. I can understand. Uh, yeah, uh, work work crews. Uh, uh, how's the work work crews? Because you know, in my opinion, it seems like they've diminished quite a bit. And and of course, I I'm looking for an end game because we've been at it a, quite a long time. Oh yeah. And 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 you're probably just as ready as I am for things to get done. Oh yeah. So. so um, um, has the work crews diminished a little bit? Are we no, still sir. looking at a November time frame, November 1st, maybe? No, I said uh, November or December. November or December. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, November or December. So we we'll have the finished course of asphalt done. There'll still be other little things to do, but all the major items of work should be complete at that time. Okay. And I've asked for a, a, a meeting uh, with Walt. He gave me a date, but I think we. Yeah, it's tomorrow to, morning, 10 a.m. Is that tomorrow morning? Yep. Okay. So I didn't get the new update. So I'll, I'll, I'll look forward to seeing you then. Yeah. And the only other thing I have is I think I asked before, um, such as railroad and other places, there haven't been any grass cutting. You, could, you guys haven't turned it over to us yet, but on railroad, I got a couple of calls about. Okay, I'll address that on a continuous basis. So I'll address if, that if they can kind of do a another cleanup, uh, it hadn't been done in a while. Okay. One question I'm gonna ask. Could you update uh, update us on forest? How far along are we on forest? On forest, south of division, the storm drain is in. It's complete. We're working forest north of division on in, uh, completing the sewer tie-in. And then following behind that with the storm drain. So you have to go right down to Lafayette. How far you have to go work down to Lafayette? Is it Lafayette? Down another, or another plan was completed. Or LaSalle. Or did you go go to the gate, Meadows Gate? Where did you have to? The last connection you have to have. Uh, I'll be honest. I, I mean, I thought it was LaSalle was up there. It could be LaSalle. That's where yeah. it's up. Yeah, we don't have to go all the way to Bayview, though. Yeah, because the left, yes, the next one up, and I know that was in another contract. That had okay. nothing to do with this. Okay. So, yeah, everybody be glad when this is over. This was August of 14. It's five years. Tell I know. I know. This asked for a lot of people. It's, yes, it's sir. I, I completely it's understand. Citizens, you know, it's tough for them. Yes, for sir. Like that. I, I know. Anyone else? Anyone else? No. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Pregnant. All right. Moving on to council reports, Mr. Lawrence. Yeah, a couple of things there. Mike, could you give us an update on the monument to this morning? Would y'all do? Did y'all have it? And uh, well, Councilman, we uh, we had a groundbreaking ceremony this morning down in the uh, Geis, what we call Geis Veterans Memorial Park. Uh, adjacent to where the pedestrian crosswalk will come down and uh, the Geist Memorial, the World War I, World War II memorials and the uh, USS Biloxi Memorial. And 
all of those. This is the site where we're going to put the Gold Star Families Monument. So we had a groundbreaking this morning. Uh, that's a that's a monument, as you recall, you've seen the picture of it. That uh, the city is providing the site. Keesler Federal Credit Union is paying for the monument, and it will be dedicated in, uh, the 23rd of March. Uh, 23rd of November is the date we're shooting for for the dedication. So we can't really get started down there until the laydown area is cleared up where the pedestrian crosswalk uh, is finishing up. That crosswalk is due to be open for Labor Day. So once after Labor Day, we'll be able to get into that site and, uh, and begin building the, the base of the monument. That was my next question. How far along we, I could see all the boards and everything on the, mm -hmm. the walkover. How far along we was right. on that? They're on schedule to open that for Labor Day. The top will be enclosed. The top will be closed. Where people can't jump out of there, you know? Correct. We jump on the cars. And the Biloxi signs will be lit up. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Gimes? Okay. Mr. Tisdale? Mr. Glavin? Yeah, I got a couple of things. Uh, I, I want to give a shout out to one of the entrepreneur, entrepreneurs in my ward, uh, Miss Brandy Jarvis Ibis. She was uh, crowned Mrs. Earth, uh, Mrs. USA Earth. And uh, so that's a proud accomplishment for her. She uh, will be attending one of our council meetings uh, shortly. And uh, she's going to give a report on some initiatives that she would like our support. So I just give everybody heads up for that. Uh, also, uh, following up uh, with the drainage issue by Waters View, I did speak to Christy. Uh, I think she's going to get with uh, uh, Ed Ott uh, to see what we can do in that uh, ditch area. But I also spoke to Connie Rocco, and she stands ready, she said, if we can get the proper permits to go in there and assist with providing equipment and resources uh, to improve that drainage area. And uh, that, that concludes my report. Rushy. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Mr. Gaines. All right. Um, I got two things uh, in my report. Um, first, August 3rd, we, between 1 and 4, we have in that Henry Beck Park a big backpack giveaway. We're going to give away 100 backpacks. Uh, full of school supply, supplies. So I encourage my council members to donate some school supplies from a backpack giveaway. Or a donation, right? We can or a little money. We okay. always take donations. Right. Absolutely. Um, uh, next, on, next I have, uh, I want to present to you uh, some contractors. Uh, Smith Contracting Company, uh, Eagle Ness Housing. I would like them to come up and give us a, a presentation about some housing opportunities that we have in East Biloxi. So these gentlemen uh, are, are going to help us repopulate the east side of Biloxi. Yes, good evening. My name is Dennis Smith. I'm the director for development for Smith Contracting. And to my... Okay, yes, good evening. My name is Dennis Smith. I'm the director for business development for Smith Contracting. And behind me, I have our, our operation director, Mark Treadaway. And also behind me, also, I have our, our owner, Eddie Smith. And Mark Treadaway will give us a presentation before the council. Mayor, Good afternoon. Uh, as uh, Mr. Gein stated, Smith Contracting is looking at going into the East Biloxi area. The project site itself is going to basically be encompassed by Holly Street, Brown, and Railroad. The site presently consists of four parcels of property as per the City of Biloxi and the Harrison County tax records. Uh, Smith Contracting is now submitting a paperwork proposal for the City of Biloxi through the Planning and Zoning and uh, the Construction Department to have the property resubdivided up into 17 lots and one large green space that can be used for a public park. Uh, the project itself is presently, or the actual land itself is presently zoned high density residential. Smith Contracting is planning to ask the City of Biloxi and the Planning and Zoning Board to allow us to put four units on each site to help cut our development and land costs. Uh, this will allow us to provide a more affordable 
project in the area, and this is going to be a rental project and allow them affordable rental cost. Uh, we'll begin construction on the site with four units. Upon 80% completion of the first four units uh, with our lender, they're going to basically continue to give us the next four, 80%, the next four, until we complete all 17 units. The estimated loan value for the project itself in the area would be, will actually be between six and seven million dollars. The project will consist of two and three bedroom units. The two bedroom units will consist of 2,078 square feet, and the three bedroom units will consist of 2,414 square feet. Each will have two full baths, built-in kitchen, all appliances, private parking, and a fenced-in rear yard. So we're actually not building a high-density apartment complex. We're actually going to design something that's going to give you more of a residential appearance and uh, give it more of a home effect. Uh, we hope the design will allow for larger families and affordable living space and give them a feeling of a home environment also. The City of Biloxi is, well, from the previous presentation, has already made the initial investment to put new infrastructure, sidewalks, uh, streets, and uh, sewer and water in the area. And this will hopefully allow us to offer better streets, better sewer, better water, and a better living environment for the whole property project and property itself. Uh, Smith has also done a large-scale marketing uh, gathering in the area. We picked up our information from the Census Bureau, the Kellogg Foundation, Harrison County, and the State of Mississippi reports. Uh, over the past five years, according to these reports, the City of Biloxi has had a 20 percent, this particular area, the core city, has had a 20 percent decrease in your population. The actual city itself has, though, had an increase in their ethnic population between Asian, American Indian, and, um, excuse me, one more look, and Latino. Uh, we're trying to develop a project that will allow people in the area that are at a base income between $45,000 to $68,000 to actually afford to live there. The poverty level for the state of Mississippi in this area is $36,000 a year. And at this particular time, you have nine casinos in the area where the service community that lives there makes between $8.50 an hour and $15 an hour. And a lot of the support businesses that work with these casinos still pay within that same range. So we're going to try to provide a community and a living environment and a project that in turn these people can afford to rent and live in. Uh, Smith Contracting, after that, will continue to investigate into new sites into East Biloxi on a single family level in a for sale basis and also in a rental market at the similar rates that we're going to offer on this particular project. Um, that's all I have to say. Does anybody have any questions? I've given you a complete packet up front. It shows the actual floor plans, the marketing data, and uh, other details about the project. I, I do have a question. Yes, sir. If, if you don't mind, it's, it, uh, it notes 17 lots, 68 units uh, on a right Yes, sir. A little over three acres. Are, how many of those units would be one bedroom? How many would be two? That'll be they'll all be two and three bedrooms. All, would be all right. According to the marketing that we found in the area, one bedroom is actually lease at a lesser amount. Uh, if you're going to basically concentrate <laughs> onto individuals that in turn have families or um, require more space, as you can tell by the size of each unit, you're talking about almost 2,100 square feet for a two bedroom unit. So that tells you they're not small. Uh, Two bedrooms and three bedrooms are actually rented at a faster rate, according to the market. Uh, besides studying the other booklets or uh, marketing data that we actually presented in a report here, we also looked into the MLS uh, for the state of Mississippi and for Harrison County, the city of Biloxi, and for Gulfport. And at this time, your average rent in the area is 88 cents to $1.33 a square foot. And Nothing has been built in this area in the city of Biloxi in the past 25 years. So right now, new construction is the thing that will actually start to bring back the population into this market. Another, another question. Is mm -hmm. it going to require any rezoning? Jerry, do you know? I mean, is it going to come before the Planning Commission? Or? Yeah. 
So it's not come before the Planning Commission yet. I would assume yeah. at some point it will. Well, we've actually, excuse me, go ahead. Okay. Right. Okay. 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 So they've started the process. Okay, thank you. Uh, and thank actually you. making it said we made a presentation to the DRC and everybody basically seems to be in support of the idea because like I said, East Biloxi hasn't had construction within 25 years in a single family or in a multifamily basis. So new construction, I think, will start to bring back the population that presently you've lost over the past five years. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Treadway. You're Appreciate welcome. that. Any questions, Mr. Lawrence? Mr. Glavin? I have none. No? Okay. And I just wanted to thank you guys for coming and thank you guys for investing in East Biloxi. So thank you. <clears throat> that concludes my report. Okay. And I don't have a report, so we'll move on to public agenda where we have citizen comments. We have 45 minutes allotted total. Each citizen gets three minutes to speak each. When you get to the table, please sign your name and address as well as state it aloud for the record. Anyone on my left, your right, that would like to come speak? Anyone on my right and your left that would like to come speak? Anyone in the back? <laughs> okay, if not, citizen comments are now closed. We'll move on to the policy agenda. Ms. Lucy, will you please read Ordinance A? Ordinance to amend the Code of Ordinances to address aggressive panhandling issues and revive licensing procedures. Previously moved by Mr. Lawrence and Mr. Glavin. All right, Mr. Lawrence, you got anything to discuss? Yeah, to turn this over to Peter, could you explain, or Michael, you know, what y'all want done here and what we're actually changing? Yeah, what we're changing is, um, you recall about a year and a half ago, we had actual licensing for uh, panhandling, certain people that were treating it as a business, so we wanted to uh, register them and have them licensed. Uh, that initially worked out pretty well because some people that did not want to be registered I think left the area. I think from a law enforcement perspective it's also uh, had some benefits but it's also had some disadvantages that uh, it maybe has given a false impression that we are welcoming people to come panhandle in other cities or maybe sending people here to come get a license. Uh, that was never the intention. Uh, we still have our aggressive panhandling uh, laws in place. We've, o we've overhauled and streamlined our panhandling ordinances. There was some information in the news last week, other cities that, that uh, have made it illegal to panhandle, and, and they are, I think, under scrutiny by the ACLU now. We're not in that list, but this was something we had been working on anyway to go ahead and take away those licensing requirements I think uh, Chief Miller has a pretty good handle of who's here and who's not here, but not to give that false impression. Uh, Councilman Newman had brought it up about a month ago to look into doing away with with the specific licensing requirement. Uh, I think coincidentally it'll probably help us uh, from the perspective of the ACLU because they have, they have never been in favor of us uh, issuing licenses for this. But it had law enforcement benefits. But overall, uh, this is a mechanism to, to take that out. It also makes it, uh, it was a little unclear about places that you're not allowed to panhandle. And this is really a safety issue. Uh, the, the law in the books was you can't be eight feet from a public street. But we've clarified that to, to state. You can't be at an intersection or an interstate exit or an interstate entrance. And, and Chief Miller, is, we've discussed this before, it, it's really a, it's almost a traffic hazard where certain people set up at the foot of an intersection or at the foot of an exit especially where people are trying to stop and, uh, and they're there. We've put signs up in some of those areas, but this is just to kind of update and clean up our ordinance. We still want to uh, aggressively uh, the, the prohibition against aggressive panhandling where someone can't touch you or come up to you or, or aggressively ask you for money, that's still on the books. We're just cleaning this up. 
Do you feel like this is the best way to go, Chief? Because you don't want to wind up handling most of these problems we have, you know? <clears throat> yeah, I think this is going to take us a more positive direction. Uh, it did help at first with determining who was in town and what kind of background they had, but we have a team of people now that's all they do all day, so we're going to run across them whether they come to get a, a permit or not now. Yeah. Uh, we're still going to encounter them. Uh, I think the, the, the change in the language about, about at the intersections, I think that's, that's going to clear it up a lot and, and help us a lot there also. And I think that the language for the ATM machine is still there, if I'm not mistaken. So I, th I think it would be a positive thing. So are we going to still permit the license, or we we do doing away with that? So then, how do you stop them if they wind up in the intersection? What do you do to them? Okay. Say they wind up at, at uh, coming off the interstate right, right there by Back Bay. It's, it's, a, it's a really a bad spot. That's right. It's an arrestable offense. Yeah, and you can do that for the rest of how long? Can't be much. Must be a misdemeanor. Well. Uh, Actually, we would run that before the judge and let the judge determine if they're going to do jail time or not. And if they do jail time, it would be up to the judge how long, what, what amount of jail time they would do if they're going to pay a fine. I would have brought this up to Peter before. I know we have these places like on Water Street where they feed them. They line up in everybody's yard and sit around the yard. And that's, that's a major problem for the people that live there. Is there any way we can write something where people that feed them, they have to eat inside that building? They have to leave. Don't bring the food out. Don't hang around outside. I mean, is there anything that you could do there to protect the neighborhood? Yeah, I think we're, we were talking about this last week as well, to setting up a meeting with some of those areas because they're, they have vacant premises outside of those areas that they're basically enabling people to set up camps. and. Uh, and there's there's a few key areas the chief knows about where there are there are camps that they're continuously having to clean up. I know a lot of them they'll go to the library and they'll go to the and they'll go to the library. I mean, and that affects us and the public. I mean, that's why we said a public nuisance and having no right to lottery. They can't just stand around somebody else's property, waiting to get fed for dinner, waiting to get fed for breakfast. You know, because that affects the whole area. So I didn't know if there's anything we could write in there where the people. That's feeding them. Need to feed them inside, not outside. And that's sent them down the road. With that way, they go sit in everybody's yard, start eating the food. If you're going to feed them, you're responsible for them. That's, I don't know if you can look at something like that, add to whatever, to make it. You know, these people are responsible. If they want to feed them, that's fine. But then they feed them on their property. We're you know going to set mean? up. We'll set up some meetings with uh, a couple of those those uh, businesses or agencies. All right, thank you. Mr. Gines, <clears throat> any discussion on Ordinance A? Mr. Tisdale. Yeah, I'm telling you, I am close my eyes uh, at, at night and I think assessment and transition center, assessment and transition center, and one day we might have an assessment and transition center. I know we're moving in that direction. I'm picking up positive vibes. We just got to be persistent and keep moving the ball down the field towards that assessment and transition center. Thank you. Mr. Glavin. Yeah, some of the language in here, you, you strike through panhandling or pedaling. What's the difference, panhandler, pedaling? What's the definition? Pedaling and soliciting were always on the always in the existing ordinance and a, a peddler is is the old door-to-door -door, uh, selling fuller brushes and vacuums, vacuums. Uh, solicitor is uh, I think maybe more magazines but a peddler almost would run the streets in a peddling wagon a peddler wagon all right and uh, panhandling panhandling is just uh, is essentially just asking for money okay so I noticed some of the restrictions in in here are intersection or interstate entrance or exit, bus or train stop, public transit vehicle, uh, 20 feet from an ATM or a bank, 8 feet from an occupied vehicle, public uh, parks, etc. Uh, so for the panhandler that's asking for cash or everything, is, is there any thought or would it would it mess up anything if we included a school? 
or doing school hours or anything like that? Does that mess up anything from a school fundraiser or, or anything like that? Should we consider restricting it from a school? You mean prohibiting panhandlers from going to schools or allowing school children to panhandle? I no. <laughs> <laughs> I understand you to say that we, we have a panhandling school. Is that what you mean? Other than your uh, Krispy Kreme donuts or, or, or right. other fun, school function fundraisers, should we consider that adding that as a restriction? No, I don't think schools really have ever been in any of the ordinances. Probably on school grounds, the school districts are going to have their own jurisdiction over what okay. happens on just, school districts. Just wanted to throw that out there in case that's a concern. Okay, no other comments? Mm, I just want to thank you all so much for hearing my, my cry about the panhandling license issue. All in favor? Unanimous votes. Brings us to Ordinance B, Ms. Lucy. Ordinance to amend Section 1299 pertaining to cruise vessel license tax. Previously moved by Mr. Lawrence and seconded by Mr. Tisdale. Mr. Lawrence, you got any discussion? Uh, Peter, can you explain what we did here? Explain it to everybody why we changing and what we doing. Sure. Uh, at the time we were looking at the gaming license taxes, which is not a part of this, but at the time we were looking at that, it did, uh, I, I noticed that our statute and our ordinance does not reflect what's in the House bill in 1992. It's not word for word. We had a little bit different language in our ordinance as compared to the House bill. And so what we're doing, what we were trying to do a couple of weeks ago, which did not make it for lack of a second, but we still want to make this change, uh, is to just track the language in the bill from 1992. The money goes into the general fund and then it's expended in those percentages that the bill states, and just to track that language. So is that one, that's just one word you changed, basically? Uh, I don't have it all in front of me, but it's- Expendable. Expendable, and there's some slight variations of the money going to Harrison County for schools as opposed to Harrison County for educational purposes, things like that. It's, uh, you you just you listen it strictly as education or not to particular schools. I just felt like we should say what the bill, what the house bill says. Yeah. We shouldn't try to interpret things in our ordinance that aren't in the house bill. So I mean, it's just uh, cleaning up the language. Is all you're doing there. Exactly. All the percentages and everything tell the same. The forty percent, twenty, you know, the way it breaks down. It's still breaks down the same way. That's what the right. bill said. That's how it's built 1504, something like that. That's it. <coughs> and you remember last week we cleaned up the privilege license tax that did not follow exactly what the statute said. I mean, as I come into something and we find some of the language is outdated, uh, I just kind of take it on myself. Let's go ahead and just revise these code of ordinances a, a few sections at a time rather than trying to do it all at once. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> that's it. The percentage is still the same, uh, 40, 40, 20, 20. It's all it's just strictly the wording. So I just want to make sure everybody understood that we, we're not changing. That's legislative. So those percentage and that uh, it's, good for, it's good for the city and the school system. That was the purpose of the game and to add that money to the school system and the city. Thank you. Mr. Tisdale? Not a thing. Mr. Glavin? So what are some of our cruise vessels existing? Every casino. All right, so no, it doesn't affect any of the excursion boats or anything like that? This no. doesn't affect it in no way? No, when they, when they approved on, on land gaming, they, there was a statute that said if you were a cruise vessel and you're on land, then they still use that phrase. Okay, so no other questions. Go ahead, Mr. Gaines, none? Okay. All in favor? Unanimous vote. Do I have a motion on the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Tisdale, second by Mr. Gines. Any discussion, Mr. Glavin? I have none. Mr. Tisdale? None. Mr. Gines? None. Mr. Lawrence? Yeah. 
<laughs> Where are you getting $7.7 .7 million from? On which one, Mr. Lawrence? I say the biggest one on there. So this project is not, um, this is like a, for a standby contractor. And that 7.7 .7 million, we use it only to award the lowest bidder. So we won't be spending 7.7 .7 million. But this is the contract that we, we used to do this a long time ago. I don't know if you remember. It's a repair replace. It's for projects that are a little bit too big for public works, but not big enough for a capital project. So like Pine Grove drainage, we're going to use this contractor to do the Pine Grove drainage project. Um, so it's not a, um, it's kind of like we do debris removal the same way. We just basically it's for to set a unit price and then um, it won't be for seven million. We'll just do it, little projects that come up like this. And why are we doing this now when we finishing up all this infrastructure and all the sewer and everything? Well, because I we know have a lot. What we're doing is not covering everything, but I mean, that's still a lot of money. Well, we're doing it now because we have a, all the areas that are not being done with infrastructure. We have a lot of work that needs to be done. And where's the money coming from? It's going to come for the bond. It's going to come. It, it may come out if we do a water project. It may come out of the water sewer fund. It may come out of. Uh, may yeah. It's just it's just a tool. It may come for Tidelands funding. A uh, Billy Ray may want to pay for some out of his budget. It may be something he needs done. So. Uh, who, who created this idea? And you must have a project, something to, to put it out at 7.7 million. So you must have something you expect going to happen. I mean, right we now, we're we yeah. sitting at the budget table. How long we got? We don't have enough money to do this. We have no money to do that. And all of a sudden, here's 7.7 .7 million sitting there. Well, this is not, we're not going to fund the 7.7 .7 million. It's basically so that we have unit prices in place to have a contractor. So every time we need a contractor to do some work, we don't have to go out and get quotes and rebid it. Okay, so the first one was 2.1 million. Where are you getting the 2 million from? The first one is So you have one that's 2 million. Well, we, million? We'd, have come, we'd have to come back to y'all to fund that, that project. This is just a tool for us to use in order to be able to get the contract. Like Pine Grove drainage, it's already a separate project. It's already have it already has funding in place. That's right. Some of that 7.7 .7, that work is going to be done under Pine Grove drainage. Yes. So we're not going to do any. We're not doing a seven million dollar project. We are. This is a standby contractor for us to issue work orders out to that we need this done so we have to it has to already be funded by some other means but it's not <laughs> <laughs> it's not you're right it says you know as we get work that needs to be done for example the pine grove or the churchill project or yeah, or the waters view ditch cleaning that you've asked for, like cleaning. that. Yeah. That might be something we could do it we, under. We have we have a There's contractor with pricing already locked in unit pricing, so we but, don't have but to. But those go projects the still be, come before the council. Yes, yes. yes, that's right. Yes, when you when you have it in order for it to be released. That's correct. The only, that's the correct. Only, the only di difference in this is that we're not going to have to put a separate RFP out every time for every project. We'll already have a contractor with pricing locked in. Because one of the things we have on those little projects, one of the problems we have are finding contractors that want to do that work because it's little work to contractors. They don't want to come in and do a $150,000, $200,000 job. It's too big of a job for public works because it would take too much time, but it's too small for the big contractors. So this helps us do that. Parallel to this is we, we, we also have a paving contractor, and he's locked in for a year yes. at a certain pound a dollar per per ton of uh, asphalt and we award contracts against it but every time we award a task order like that it comes back to you but 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 it's a task order contract this is just it's, it's a yes. this one is a task order contract just like it's a sidewalk contract just like the paving contract except it's for just general just general work. construction work yeah well, let me explain this to you all again Y'all have 7.7 .7 million sitting in this thing, so you uh, no, wait, no, not in the money, but you have that much work has to be done because you had to come up with a number somewhere. So you got projects. Wait a minute. We, 
we Wait haven't done we didn't do this last year we haven't done this uh, probably since katrina hit because katrina hit and we basically quit doing all normal work so the contractor the way these this contract is set up the contractor knows he's not getting 7.7 .7 million dollars worth of work we it's written in the specs in the contract that way that this is on an as-needed basis so he's aware he's going to sign a contract that says that already we've already we've already addressed that let me we'll ask, put it out let me ask a question he had to he had to submit a price for anything that yes. was on that list like yes. he had to submit a price for PVC pipe he had yes. to submit a price for contract pipe so the reason I think it's seven million is you had to total up everything he put a bid in on and if you total up all of his bids some were low some were high That's most right. were low the total of all of his bids for all these little unit prices we're 7.7 .7 million. I think that's right. Yes, that's right. And it's the 7.7 .7 million is strictly so we could determine how, who was the lowest bidder. So we could compare all the contractors that submitted a project. So he, it's, he's aware there won't be a 7.7 .7 million dollar project. We have only guaranteed him one one project in the spec. It says you'll get one work assignment, no value determined at this time. So he, it's it's clear they know that they're not getting that. And what's the project you guaranteed him? Well, Pine Grove drainage because we've already we've so already it's already, already funded. Already, it's already in the budget. Who, who, who had all the discussions? We, the so how much money is going to cost us? Because once you pass this, it's going to cost us money, and I want to know where the money's coming from. I don't care whose project it's, it is. <laughs> well, y'all had these discussions. Right. I wasn't involved in any of those discussions. The, so where's the cost? The it's like okay, Pine Grove Pine Grove drainage is already a budgeted project, so. We're not going to spend any money on this contractor unless it's a budgeted project or it comes back to y'all for approval. Who budgeted this money? Y'all did last if I could, year. If I could comment, just uh, Pine Grove was on uh, was the one item that made the fourteen million dollar two thousand nineteen series uh, bond issue. So that fourteen million dollars. The administration set aside some money to do work in different wards. That's the work that's to be done in my project. I don't need it. I'm good. Thank you. That's the work to be done in my project. What's it going to cost? Well, we just got it videoed. At the time, we estimated that could cost between half a million dollars and a million and a quarter. Mm -hmm. It's got to be videoed. Are we going to put new pipe in there? Are they going to sleeve it? What can they do? Well, since then, they've discovered that uh, the, the pipe or whatever it's called, PVC, whatever it might be underground, it can't, it can't be sleeved. You can't sleeve it, stitch it for it, whatever. So you're going to have to put new pipe or new conduit in there, whatever, whatever you call it, covering. Now, having said that, the advantage I see in putting this out, you might spend a total of $7 million. You might only spend $2.5 million. But since these projects are always all already budgeted, they are on that list that we approved to spend that bond issue money. So we've already, we already have an idea of what the projects are. We don't know what they're going to cost. As I see this, this is a good way to keep your costs down and certainly allows you to act quicker than to put out an RFP on each project. So the money's already there from the bond issue. You got a better price and you got, I would assume, you've vetted okay. the companies. That's you got correct. a company that understands that, hey, we'll do the work on an as needed basis and we've already told you what we're basing our costs on so this is what we'll charge is that pretty much it that's correct okay thank you so you're going to spend seven hundred thousand dollars on pine grove and that's it because that's, right yes. that's what the bond is it's that all that speech you made you got seven hundred thousand dollars can you do it for seven hundred thousand dollars period that's the name of the game that's all you're supposed to get unless yeah. councilman uh, councilman yeah. tisdale comes up with a change order which yeah. he changed yeah. might yeah, yeah. Yeah, we hope. Yeah, that's right. We hope it's not going to be seven hundred thousand. And I haven't. We haven't priced out Pine Grove drainage on these current bid prices we have. Um, so I don't know for sure off the top of my head. But it, if it has to be more than that, we'll have to come back to y'all. I we do want to point out that I'm glad this is a good project. That it's the first one to be done. I've only been bugging you and your predecessor and the public works director and the previous administration it's only taken us six years to get yeah. to this point yeah thank you you're welcome anything else mr lawrence <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what you're going to do in the next six years
Well, the other one, they might have done What's a, what's a, what's, what was that on? What was it? One of well, I didn't mean to chloroform the conversation with that comment. Oh, no, the, the one we added on D, this is for the the road running across the railroad track. That's when you add on it's at the $12 million deal or $10 million, and we have to put up $2 million. That's the money that's been set aside by the governor to do some special projects all around the state. They have a portal that's open now that we're able to put projects into for consideration. This council at the last meeting approved two of those projects. And that was the Sanger Theater with a match and uh, Ten million. Point Cadet Marina. This is the third project we're going to submit to the portal. And it's it's the Pops Ferry extension. It, now you've already approved us applying for a build grant to the uh, Federal Highway Administration. At the same time, in parallel, we're going to ask the, go the governor to give us some money, and, and, and we hope one of those two will happen. If one happens, and if we they, if they both happen, we'll just say no to one one of them. But this is this is just a project. We're asking permission to submit a project to the. Uh, yeah, for, the $10 million. for the Gulf Coast Restoration Fund to, to build the Pops Ferry Extension. I noticed you had something about the I 20 percent is $2 million. Right. Do we have a way to go after that money to get that paid to? Well, the, the, language, the language we use, and, and we're trying to be careful, we have to promise if they give us $10 million or $12 million that we'll, we'll come up with two. And, and we said that we were, um, I think the language here, It says, we will provide the $2 million match from a build discretionary program that the city applied for from the Restore Act, or BP uh, money, or tax incentive financing, or, or other sources which would be available. So we don't know where the, A, we don't know if we're going to get this grant. And if we get the grant, we don't know where we're going to get the $2 million. But we know we've got multiple opportunities to get it. But we. We have to promise a 20% match to apply for the grant. Well, we have to go after the money. You got to take the shot of trying to get it. I mean, that's you know, the name the of the game. <laughs> and then we're, as I say, we're asking for the Federal Highway Administration to give us the same. And we, you, you approve, you approve the bill grant, which was the exact same project mm -hmm. with 12, 12, 12 million and a two million dollar match. So this is the exact same deal that we sent to the Federal Highway Administration. I mean, tough to get all these grants. I said we got to put six million dollars. We'll be very disappointed if we don't get some of this. We're I think asking, we ought to get some. Yeah, you got three on one. We're asking for a lot of grants all over the place here. All right, thank you. Okay. All in favor of the consent agenda? Unanimous vote. Any exceptions? Anyone? Yeah, I'll leave A alone because that's going to come back to haunt us. All right, move on to code enforcement hearings, Mr. Creel. This is a case that uh, was previously held up until we could find out some information. Actually, what's happened is the property at 2317 Arbor Drive has sold. The new owner has come in and pulled a permit to repair the structure and clean up the property. So we would consider this hearing closed. This Closed? This case. Okay. Moving on, do I have a motion for the routine agenda? So moved. Motion by Mr. Tisdale, second by Mr. Gines. Any discussion, Mr. Lawrence? Yeah, uh, yeah, we have any finances coming in? Involved here, can it? What you trying to buy a fire station back there? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. All in favor of the routine agenda? Unanimous votes. To have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Mr. Tisdale. Second. Seconded by Mr. Lawrence. All in favor? Unanimous vote. And we, the meeting is closed.
And we do have a special budgeted meeting in five minutes.